Welcome back to Inside Options. I'm James Boardman, and tonight with me is Wesley Martins. He's a commodities trader at Absa Capital, and we're talking about investing into gold and into a few other commodities as well. So, Wesley, I've got a, a quite a fun graph up here that I'd like to, to, to show the audience at home. We've got the S&P 500 in red versus uh, gold in blue. Yeah, as you can see, gold has uh, definitely outperformed uh, the S&P, obviously in relative terms uh, uh, there. But uh, I think that's uh, also a testament to, to the Yeah, economy. this is, just, just for the viewers at home, this is the, from January 98, we've based it to 100. So that's in relative terms, gold and the S&P were set to 100 in 1998. And uh, it goes up to July 2010. So you can see this divergence there. Yeah, uh, in, in, in short, I think uh, the world is uh, not as a financially safe place in the form of, of instruments to invest your money in. Yeah. So uh, gold as a safe haven um, commodity or instrument has definitely uh, uh, taken root, as you can see with that graph, sort of since uh, the, the uh, 2008... Um, or fall down. Collapse. Yes, <laughs> collapse. <laughs> um, uh, we've seen really gold just uh, yeah. one directional. Um, a lot of investors fleeing to the, that safe haven. And uh, yes, it's worked well and uh, it's been a good store of value. Uh, yeah, but it's... At We've also got quite a fun graph here of uh, the spot in U.S. dollars. Now we can see there this is from uh, September 2010 to August 2011 to today. Just basically a one-way trend, and we can see the sort of the shape of it there. Then, interestingly enough, in Zar, it's quite a different picture. It is. Um, you know, we, we, we've seen the, the underlying strength in gold come through in Zar. However, we've also had um, RAND strength that has moderated um, that the, the RAND gold uh, price. However, last week where we saw the RAND weaken substantially, um, that also translated into to higher prices for RAND gold, uh, as can be seen on the graph there. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's amazing. Is that RAND weakness there? That's, uh, that's RAND weakness with a combination of, of, of a stronger gold. Gold uh, touching 1,800. Um, and basically a, a risk-off uh, environment where um, investors didn't know where to put their money and, and gold is... is is one of those instruments of those that places. yeah that they've they've uh, taken their money out of and put in, uh, with the the U.S. downgrade and um, the debt issues in in Europe, um, yeah there's a lot of uh, volatility in in underlying instruments yeah. So that's 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 safe haven now. I mean in South Africa, interestingly enough, we really switched our economy over from gold to platinum. I mean, wh what do you think is going to happen with the platinum price? I mean, the platinum share prices. Well, uh, platinum is often used as a proxy for, for economic uh, growth. And, and as you can see with the graph there, um, you know, that has been um, sideways for, for, for some time, given the, uh, the, the uh, range that it's been trading. And I think that's, that's reflective since um, 2008, the sentiment that is out there that uh, you know, the economy is going to take a while to, um, and I'm, when I say the economy, the world economy, is going to take a while to get going and, and, and um, start producing jobs okay. and, and, and so forth. So, you know, until that point, I think platinum will trade in a, a fairly sideways uh, pattern, if you, if you like. It is also sentiment-driven, uh, but uh, very much uh, with, with platinum ET Ns and Fs uh, in, in the international markets, there is a sentiment aspect to it, but it's definitely used as a proxy for, for, for economic uh, growth, if you like. So, I mean, do you think there'll be demand for sort of platinum in China and India for, for, for cars that are sort of, they're rolling out now? I mean, they need the catalytic converters, and that's a the main use, I think. Is that the main yes, use? Yes, it's, it's a definitely, it's a, it's a core industrial uh, uh, metal. Um, however, you know, uh, with, with the economy under pressure, um, you know, until we see some, some proper growth figures coming out, I think platinum will have a, a bit of difficulty in getting out of the sort of the 1800 range okay. that it's uh, been in. But, um, yeah, it's, you know, not necessarily only an economic uh, indicator, but it's um, uh, the, the core fundamentals of what un uh, drives platinum are, are a lot more relevant. It's uh, less of a store of value as, as, for instance, gold is, yeah. What do you think of the oil price at the moment? I mean, were you trading it in 2008 when it went all the way up to $150 a barrel? Yeah, oil price again. You know, it's 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 one of your economic uh, um, indicating uh, commodities. Again, driven you know by strong supply and demand uh, 
uh, aspects. And you know, we've seen in the last uh, a couple of years a lot of um, investor buying, funds buying uh, those commodities as well, and noise coming out of the U.S. Uh, about buoying that price uh, due to speculators and so okay. forth. But uh, the underlying fundamentals of, of oil have uh, still been quite supportive. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we, we see that fluctuate with uh, the market's view of where the economy is going, the world so economy. Platinum and oil together, when the economy is bad, their price goes down. When the economy is looking better, their price goes up. They, they, they do tend to, uh, you know, not necessarily 100% correlation, but that tends it's to be the feel of, of, so of those underlying there. commodities. So yeah. what's, what's the most exciting commodities market, do you think, at the moment, sort of around the world? Well, I must say they, they're all pretty volatile. It's... Uh, you know, from, from oil to gold to even our local uh, uh, agricultural uh, commodities, uh, they've all got a lot of uh, volatility for, you know, different fundamentals. But uh, right now there's, there's a lot of volatility in the market. And and are people making money from trading it? I mean... Um, making and losing, yeah. uh, you know, at the end <laughs> of the day. It's a zero-sum game thing. <laughs> it is a zero-sum game in, in the futures market um, where there's a long player, there's a short player. Um, but uh, the underlying uh, fundamentals of those, those, those commodities, if you, if you stick to them, I think you, know, you can attain uh, uh, value and, and trading profits out of that. And then, I mean, what's your take on trading, say, a gold share versus trading the gold price by a derivative or the new gold ETF? Well, the, the gold share gives you um, a, a long position in, in that underlying. Um, a lot of people are comfortable knowing that it's unwritten by... Uh, actual physical gold, um, and and people are used to trading shares. Uh, derivatives tend to be a, a little bit of an unknown for, for the general investor. Yeah. However, that gives you as good a exposure to to the underlying uh, commodity, um, and you and the main advantage of going direct into the commodity via the ETF rather than the share. What what is that? Well, uh, the the underlying futures you don't have to uh, pay the full amount up front. Uh, the underlying ETF you do because you okay. you effectively are paying for the underlying gold that is held in that that ETF, um, and and whereas with the, the derivative you you pay a, a fraction of of the, the full yep. nominal of that and, and then, you get so you get, so you get more gearing and you, then you get, also yeah. compared to a gold mining company I mean you don't have uh, strikes threats of nationalisation. All these sort of things going on. Agreed. Uh, you know, getting exposure to gold, it's, it's a more direct um, uh, way of getting exposure to gold. Whereas, as you say, uh, the, uh, buying the underlying share, you have those uh, corporate uh, issues that go along with that share as well as uh, the underlying market that drives the, the share price or the gold price. Uh, gold, uh, so share just price. a quick run through, what mm. are the main commodities you, you, you can now trade that we've got available through these derivative contracts. Great. On, on the derivatives, obviously gold that we've spoken about, platinum, um, silver, uh, West Texas Intermediate Brent cr uh, 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 crude, uh, uh, and, and copper. And sadly, that's all we've got time for tonight. Um, thanks very much for watching Inside Options. I'm James Baldwin, and with me tonight was Wesley Martins, a commodities trader from AMSA Capital. <music>